Now, today we're going to talk about angels, bodhisattvas, and immortals. And we're also going to talk about compassion and healing and being whole. Because it turns out the difference between angels and bodhisattvas and immortals turns out how we approach our stories, how we work with compassion, and how we achieve our wholeness, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so let's look at angels first. From the Christian Bible, from the Christian teachings, angels are extensions of God. So any angel is actually a manifestation of God. And angels actually do not have free will because angels are extension of God's will. So that's an interesting distinction. Humans which have free will tend to think of angels as being more free-willed beings, but they're not. If you look at traditional writings, traditional teachings of the Christian church, they're actually extensions of God. And angels are sent down to help us along our path towards achieving wholeness. In other words, from the teachings, it's actually a path towards heaven, a path towards God, a path towards wholeness. And they're there to help us get there. That's really interesting. So the guides of God to strive us towards one story, whether you're a Muslim or a Christian or other traditions which have angels in them, the angels are there to guide people towards the story that the religion teaches. So really, angels are a guide towards a single story, a single wholeness that the religion teaches from. And depending on the religion, the story changes a little bit from religion to religion, it turns out. Do angels exist? Sure they exist. How we perceive them is very personal, it turns out, because we are free-willed and we do have our perception. But the angel is there to help you heal, help you find your wholeness, help you work towards your faith, help you be strong and true towards that belief you're working towards. Okay? Now, bodhisattvas are different. Bodhisattvas come from the Buddhist religion. A bodhisattva is not a spiritual being. A bodhisattva is a human being. And what a bodhisattva represents is a being that's capable of achieving nirvana, but instead of going to nirvana, instead of releasing into nirvana, that being stays here in compassion to help others work towards nirvana, work towards their wholeness. So, bodhisattvas are helping people strive to release their suffering, strive to release their stories, to become whole in the path towards nirvana. Now, nirvana is a different concept than heaven. So, an interesting way to teach religion is all religions teach us a story on how to see the world, how to hold a world view. And what changes from religion to religion actually is the story, but more importantly, what changes from religion to religion is the destination of the story. So the destination in the Christian belief is to go to heaven, to become one with God, wholeness. Okay? The destination in Buddhist thought is nirvana. Nirvana is absolute release. It's letting go 100% absolutely, and the wholeness is 100% release, letting go of everything to be truly released. So that's the goal of the Buddhist teachings, nirvana. Now, Taoism teaches how to be whole in your story, to be true to your story, to be who you are as fully as you can. So the destination of Taoism is into oneself and to be true to oneself and the story that you hold as yourself, to be truly Casey or Bob or Tom, to be the best person you can be in that story. Now in Taoist belief, this brings up the third category of spiritual or beings that we look up to and that they have immortals. Now immortals in Taoism are beings that achieve spiritual form. Now listen to this really carefully. In life we are three different aspects. We're body, we're mind, and we're spirit. Okay? The body represents our physical form. The mind represents our stories. And the spirit represents the levels of reality which are not physical. So, for many people, heaven would be a spiritual reality and earth would be a physical manifestation of what we are. And we're striving to reach the heaven or the spiritual manifestation of a more large, complete form. So, immortals are in Taoism those humans, beings, that achieve a spiritual form. They transcend the physical to become spiritual. 
And so immortals are guides of spirit. And once you've achieved the spiritual form, you can alternate from physical to spiritual form and you come back to the physical to teach. So like bodhisattvas, immortals are teachers also. So immortals are guides of spirit and they're teaching you how to work towards yourself, your own story, your true story. So if you look at the three differences between angels, bodhisattva, and immortals are kind of the destination of where they're trying to get you to. Angels are guides to God or guides to heaven, the wholeness story. Bodhisattvas are guides in compassion to release and get you to nirvana. And immortals are beings who have achieved their own story and they stick around to help you find your story. So it's a destination that changes from religion to religion. And what I found in the years of helping people learn spirituality and work religions is people tend to have a default of which religion works better for them. So some people are working towards God or heaven. Some people are working towards nirvana. And some people are working towards the best story they can be in. Some people merge all three together. You can actually merge them together, ironically enough. So what changes is <clears throat> the level of wholeness, the story you're heading towards. Now, unfortunately, in the history of religion, crusades, history shows that people tend to fight over stories. They tend to fight over which story is better. It's not a question of which story is better. It's just different approaches depending on who you are and to work it. So, for instance, in China right now, the communist government believes they have the right to impose the story on their people. And if you don't believe their story, well, they'll kill you. So, and likewise, the crusades in Christian tradition have killed many people to try to force people to be in their story. So, this stuff is actually pretty heavy-duty stuff, actually. And some people aren't going to like what I'm saying because they won't necessarily want to believe their religion is capable of doing bad things. But in the striving of pushing people to other stories. Yes, humanity have, has done quite a bit of bad things, unfortunately. So, I'm here to help heal, to help bring it together. I'm teaching the differences because they're all good destinations. And it really depends on what you need as a person as far as how you strive towards it. And to learn how not to push it onto another person because that will create conflict. That's judgment. And the judgment creates conflict and then breaks your wholeness. So the more you try to push these truths on someone who's not ready for it, the more you actually break apart your own wholeness, the more you hurt yourself. So if you're a person who's working towards heaven, understand the other people are going to get there anyway. You just have to be gentle in how you help them, not try to force them to it, because they have a different path to get to heaven. That's all. Now, this gets really interesting because there are different levels of wholeness. In other words, there are different stories and how we hold the story changes how we hold wholeness. <clears throat> the interesting truth is the definition of healing is to make whole. So healing shifts from person to person because what they need to be whole changes based on their essence, changes based on what's going on, changes based on their situation. So healing is actually a complicated process. Most people think healing is a very physical process, a very predetermined process. It's not. It's much more open-ended than people realize because what we need to be healed can be much more complicated than we give credit for. So when we're striving to wholeness, understand there are different levels of wholeness. And just because you're at one point of achieving wholeness doesn't mean someone else is ready to achieve the same level of wholeness as you are. So you have to be careful and respect where each person is on their path in order to help them more gracefully move towards their wholeness. Now, Earlier, when I was talking about bodhisattva, I mentioned the term guides of compassion. Compassion is a fascinating term because compassion is not a base term. Compassion is actually a composite term. And so that means compassion is not what people think it means. So if I were to define compassion, I would define it as selfless acceptance. But the deeper definition of compassion is something different. It's actually applied kindness. We teach compassion is to have heart. We teach compassion is to help a person grow and become better. We teach compassion is to help a person open up and see where they are so they could be a little bit more complete. So depending on what a person needs in their wholeness, compassion changes. 
depending on a person's essence, compassion changes in how we have to apply it. So compassion is a very difficult concept because we tend to apply it heavy-handedly relative to our own stories and not taking into account of the story of the person we're trying to be compassionate towards. <clears throat> so compassion has to include the ability to see the essence of the person we're working with and help them, not guide them to where we think they should be, but guide them where they're heading towards in gentle steps. When we guide a person to where we think we are, or they should be, that's morality and that creates crusades, that creates a lot of problems, as history has shown us. So in compassion, we have to be careful not to apply the path that we're on for another person. We have to help them be on their path and help them be graceful in their path and help them show the essence of others so they can balance out how they work with others rather than create conflict. So compassion is a really tricky concept and I find that it's better to teach it as applied kindness. Now let's go back to the terms of angels, bodhisattvas, and immortals because the way those three spiritual beings work changes depending how they're working with their compassion. So angels are working with compassion of God to help a person become whole and become whole to a larger universe, a larger God. But the Safas are helping people in compassion release stories which are hurting them and to simplify down to a, a base core self instead. In other words, to release into Nirvana and release all the stories which are taking them further away from their essence. And immortals or Taoist teachers are teaching you how to be true to your story, true to your essence and not fight with other people's essences, but to be strong in who you are and find joy in working with others and together working towards larger processes. So if you look at the compassion of each of these teachings, the Christian teaching or the Muslim teaching, the Muslim teaching or the, I mean the Buddhist teaching, sorry about that, or the Taoist teaching, you can see that compassion changes a little bit based on the story being shown, based on the destination they're taking you towards. And we have to be careful not to get too wrapped up in the destination and understand there are multiple destinations and we can be kind in how we work with each of the destinations. Now, not everyone's going to like this talk because people like to think there's only one true story. And I'm showing you there are multiple stories and people are going to get really upset with this truth. And they're going to go, oh, that's just not what it's about. He's got the story wrong. He's got this baseline wrong. I'm just simplifying it. You can modify it to fit your needs. I'm not going to say this is perfect in the way I'm explaining it because this is a complicated topic. Be open-minded and see their different destinations, be aware of their different stories, and each of them are valid in achieving a different state of being. So to be compassionate is to accept the layers of essence in play. To be compassionate is to work towards wholeness and understand there are many different definitions of wholeness. Understand. All the religions are teaching good stories. All the religions are teaching very similar spiritual teachings, it turns out. What changes from religion to religion is how they're using that spirituality to achieve the goals of the story or the destination of the story. And they're all valid destinations. So respect the destinations and you'll discover more kindness in life. You'll discover a deeper compassion. So this is a complicated topic. You're probably going to have lots of questions. You can ask them. Am I teaching this perfectly? No, I'm not. I'm giving you a simplified version of this to see something deeper within, and then you can take it deeper with your own experiences. I'm not going to say I'm an expert of the Bible. I'm not going to say I'm an expert in these other teachings. I've taught thousands of people. I've helped people come to their wholeness. And this is what I've discovered along in my path. And this is the way I've laid it out to make it easier to teach. But remember, the teaching isn't the destination. The destination is what you make it to be. The teaching is just a guide to help you get there. But the guide can be modified or the guide can shift from person to person. So respect that. Now subscribe to our channel. We really can use the help. And it'll allow me, the more you subscribe, the more I'll do these more interesting side videos. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, it's about the destination. Where are you heading towards? 
Are you looking for a larger wholeness to be whole with God? Are you looking for a personal wholeness to be true to your story or true to your family or true to love? Or are you looking for a release to let go of suffering, to let go of the drama of life and then work on a Buddhist path on that? It's not that these paths are wrong or right. It's actually more which one's right for you, which one fits your essence and where you are. And typically as we grow, we change which one is appropriate for us. So it's okay to, over time, to shift from one path to the other path because each of the paths will teach us something different. So subscribe to our video so I can keep doing this, these spiritual teachings if you're interested. Send a comment or two and we'll go from there. Have a great day. Namaste.